my name is Terry Sproul, and I want to welcome you to my studio. Tonight, we're in the Blab Room, and I have Leslie here with me. She's helping me out in the Joe position. Joe's down in New Orleans without me. We're going to have a long discussion when he gets back next week. How dare he go to New Orleans without me? But, oh well. <sighs> okay, I'm over it. Um, tonight we're going to be playing with primary elements, and that's the other reason why I thought about le having Leslie come in, because she's actually the owner of Color Art, and she's actually the one who invented these lovely little prod um, products. So I'm going to switch the camera down, hopefully quick enough so you don't see my PJs, but if not, you know, you see my PJs. Here we go. See, there they are. They're purple. They're purple. <laughs> <laughs> I told you they were purple. <laughs> okay, we're playing in my art journal as usual. Um, We'll get the camera better here. Sorry about that. That's the only bad part about this is I can't use two different cameras. Um, I did just so, and I don't know why I can't get it to pull out a little more, but we're working on it. I did just so prior to uh, you guys getting here, so it is completely dry. And I'm using this beautiful stencil from um, Prima. It's a uh, Jamie Doherty stencil, and it's just gorgeous. gorgeous. So the very First thing, I, and it's got these three flowers down at the bottom. Look at that, baby. Aren't those just so pretty? So as you see, this is a huge stencil. So first thing I want to do is just get an idea of where this is going to lay. And I'm just going to put a little pencil mark right around her face because I want to put some um, color down just around her face where it's going to be but the rest of it I'm going to color in later so this is just a real quick little sketch so you can barely see anything there but it's just giving me an idea of where it's going to be now I've talked to you guys about this one in the past I love Titan Buff um, the color Titan Buff it can be from any company this happens to be from Deco Art but it could be from Golden it could be from Liquitex anybody they're all the same it's the color that I like I like this color for um, faces. So why I outlined that is to give me an idea of where her face is going to be for later. So I'm just going to real quickly color that in. And that will work out for me later. Okay. Now tonight, like I said, I'm going to be using the primary elements. And I'm going to show you so many different ways to use these. You're going to be blown away. So basically using one product, multiple different colors, but one product, I'm going to show you different ways you can use it. So let's start off with showing you what it is for starters. I am using Smoky Diamond to start with. And it is a powder. See that? And when I mix this up, Leslie can tell me tell you a little bit more about what it's made out of. But it's basically pigments and um, mica. And I'm going to mix it with a heavy gel medium. Okay, you can't read that, but trust me, it's a heavy matte gel medium. And basically, it's going to make a... Um, a molding paste for me to be able to put through the stencils. So if you want to, while I'm mixing this, Leslie, you can tell us a little bit more about it. Well, primary elements are a pigment blend that we grind, and then we add the nuance, sparkle, shimmer, whatever word we're going to use to add some sparkle to the pigments. But we custom blend over 220 colors of pigments. And that way the artist has their they have the flexibility to make their own paints their own way for whatever surface you want. As long as it's a water soluble mixture, you're mixing it in, meaning your paintbrush or your spatula like she's using with, would clean up with soap and water, the pigments will disperse. So I, as I've talked to you guys in the past, gel medium is naked paint, right? I've said that to you guys hundreds of times probably. So since it's naked paint, I can take this pigment and make paint. So right here, I'm not really making paint. I will be making paint later. I'm actually more making um, a stencil material, something to put through a stencil. So see how thick that is? I'm going to put this lid on just so I don't like I'm going to go flying everywhere because I will. I'm and all I did was mix it up as you see me doing 
quote. Um, Leslie was telling you a little bit more about it. And it gave me this really beautiful, rich color. And it was kind of after black. And this isn't quite dark black. It's kind of more of a... Yeah, Terry, do you have a headset on? Or are you talking I'm about... Not using headset. All of a sudden, you became fuzzy. And you were not fuzzy before you started mixing. I'm not sure what the gel medium did to your mic, but... <laughs> Okay, um, hopefully it'll clear up because I'm, um, I'm, I don't know if I can just throw the headset on and we'll start, but I will give it a try here in a second. So basically I'm going to line that um, back up. Is, are you still hearing me well enough or should I try to put the headset on? I think I try to put your headset on. You are really getting bumpy there. Okay. A second here because I gotta actually plug it in. And this is the link to the gel medium, a very long link. I apologize. Dick Blick has that extra heavy gel medium if you need to find the Liquitex while she's speaking. Yeah. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I don't know if it has something to do with when you're demonstrating something happens to your sound there. It's so strange. Is it better now? No. No, well, I got the headset on. Yeah. Well, let's keep going and see what we can do. Maybe okay. it will clear up. So basically, I put the um, stencil down, and I want to go through ninety percent of it, but I kind of want to avoid this rose because I don't want to. I use I made black, and I don't want to put the black through the rose. So I'm going to avoid that rose and come in with a different color. Welcome, Sally. Welcome, Sally. So I'm going through the stencil with the primary elements and the heavy gel medium. I'm going to do my best to avoid that rose. That's a big stencil, but boy, it's gorgeous. It is a huge stencil. <laughs> it's okay. You're going to make a masterpiece. Yep. Now, um, always clean your stencils off after you're done. Um, normally, I would take it out to the kitchen and throw it into a uh, water bath, basically, to get this stencil clean. Because you don't want, especially these ones that have a lot of detail, don't let this stuff um, harden on it. You'll just never get it off again, and you'll be really bummed with yourself. And, and I know some of these stencils are quite expensive. I think this one was one of the ones that I know I probably spent 15 bucks on. We apologize to everybody for the distortion. This didn't happen last week, so we're not sure why, what's causing this technical difficulty. Yes, and um, like I said prior to you guys coming in, this um, whole platform that I'm using here is in beta still, so I'm sure they're going to get a lot, thing, a lot more things worked out as we go along, and it'll get better. If not, we will find a different platform and work on that. Okay. Iris says spittle. What's spittle? Hmm. Wow. Isn't that gorgeous? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I shouldn't have left it because I wanted to get that rose in there, but that's okay. We'll work. We'll figure that out later. Okay. I'm going to clean my spatula off. And that shouldn't take too long to dry because it's pretty thin. And I'll be honest, I don't think the headset's helping you. I think it's making it worse. So, sorry, Terry. Love that image. Terry, you still there?
Yeah, I saw you try to join Sally. We're going to bring people in when she, it's going to be about maybe 20, 30 minutes before we bring people in for discussion, but her screen's locked up. Welcome, Bob. We're having technical difficulties here. Yeah, I know. I'm going to call her. Oh, she went off. Okay, that means she'll be back. Okay, perfect. I think she realized what was going on. Hey, Sally. There we go. Whew. Sorry about that, guys. Panic. Oh, and you first. sound perfect. <laughs> yes. Well, maybe that's what we needed to do. Yay. Yay. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that, guys. So we haven't done much, you know, basically we just did the stencil. So now I want to um, do a couple more things. So I want to make a um, glass beads uh, like i said i wanted to show you as many different ways that you could use the primary elements and using it in different ways so i kind of showed you guys this last week but these are glass beads and this one's from liquitex and what i'm going to do with this one is i want her hair to be all glass beads so i am going to i'm just checking to see that that's pretty close to dry I'm going to take the glass beads and put a nice thin coat everywhere where her hair would be. Now, again, this is a medium and mediums are naked paints. So if I took this and I wanted to mix the um, primary elements into it, it would work. Or, like I did last week, if you sprinkle them directly into it, as it dries, it will also catch the color. And the everything that's white will turn clear. And you'll be able to see the black underneath it that I have from the lines that I put in. This is going to turn out really cool. Don't you love when ideas that you have floating around in your head actually work? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Love it. I had to, yeah, I, I totally didn't know if this was going to work, but I'm like, this might be really pretty when it's all done. It's going to take forever to completely dry, but it's okay. Forever only, is pretty much overnight, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, it'll be dry by tomorrow morning, but. So don't close, if you do this technique, don't close your art journal you know, until morning, I will leave this sitting open all night just to. You know, the pigments dry like a cut and dried abalone shell when they're mixed in that gel and it dries like that. That'll be really pretty. I know. I'm like, this is gonna be so cool. Okay, so I got a little more hair. Her hair goes down here too. Wow, wow. Sally Lynn says she's run her glass bead gel through her printer. Wow. Ooh. Ooh. What kind Thank of printer you. is that, Sally? That's quite interesting. I'd love to hear more about that or see a photo of it. If you um, go over to my to Facebook, I have a group in Facebook called All Things Terry Sproul. I'd love to see you put a photo of that in my group so I could see it. Mm -hmm. And if it's a color art product, we have a group on Facebook also called um, Color Art Art Paint color. Studio. Sorry, <laughs> and you could put it in there also. Okay. So this time I'm going to take, I usually use my fan brush, but I don't see it right now. So we're going to use something else and we're going to make her what color do we have here. I think I'm going to use some of this sun, sunflower 
And I think I want to use a coral berry, but let me see what Welcome, else we got. Welcome, Nice to see you. Okay, so I'm going to use... Now, I didn't show you this earlier, so let me show you this right off the bat. You can get these in two different sizes. This is the bigger one. Or you can get them in a smaller one, which is like this, and you can get it in a four-pack. I've opened this four-pack, obviously. This is a four-pack. So you can get these in a lot of different ways. So those right. are the four 10 mil jars or the one big mama 30 mil jar, correct? Yep. Yes. So I'm going to use um, coral berry and sunflower. And I'm just taking a paintbrush and I'm going to just tap some color into the glass beads. And as this dries, it will bleed into the um, glass beads, into the medium. You can actually start seeing it do it right, right away. And it will bleed into the color later. It'll be really, really pretty. Okay, so now I'm going to come in with some red, or the coral berry. What was that first color you put down? Um, sunflower, I believe. Okay. Sunflower, yes. And if you don't think it's bleeding enough for you, and give it a little while, but you can hit this with a little water, and it will also bleed for you. Okay, so this is a second way that I've showed you. I've showed you two ways to use this product already. Um, somebody asked if it could be dried with a blow dryer. I was going to say, you know, it can be, heat's really not its best friend. I mean, you can, but you don't want to ever boil anything. Yeah. But yeah, it, you know, I just give it some patience. Let it dry on its own. Crafters aren't patient. No, I know. I, I, <laughs> you know, honestly, I if I have a big project that I know that's going to have to dry for a while, I will do it right before I leave for like a vacation or CHA or, or, you know, going to see somebody because I know when I get home, it'll be ready for me to do something with it. I have to do two projects, one that I'm willing to wait for. And the second one, will I tinker around while the first one dries. That's a good idea too. <laughs> see how it's already starting to bleed. You guys can already see that starting to do its thing. So... Okay, so that's two ways. Third way is you can actually grab my. I'm going to pull this out of the way here. I'm going to lay this back down. This is my mat that I'm working on, so I can move it. Sally and says this is like your own cooking show. It is. <laughs> How many ways can you use one one um, ingredient? So this time I'm going to use. Sorry, got to get the color. Uh, wisteria, and I'm going to use uh, primary elements um, glazing liquid. Now you can actually make your own um, spray also if you get her solution, the solution. And I don't have any of that, so I show you how to do that. So bad this time, for not no, sending, I'm sorry, bad, no, bad, no big deal. Um, this time, I'm actually going to make my own paint. So I've used it to make my own um, stencil material. I've used it to make my, um, move it to mix into a pigment or into a, uh, to the beads. And this time I'm going to make paint. So you could customize your own colors, how dark you want it, how light you want it. And look at that beautiful color. That's the glazing meeting, right? Yep. I just realized I didn't have enough there because I knew I was going to need more because I want to basically paint that whole background.
Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Look at that. Look at that yumminess. So now I have my own paint. Again, putting my lid on because I don't want to spill because I know I will. Hey, I just rhymed and didn't even know it. I'm a poet and I don't even know it. <laughs> okay. Enough of that. Okay. So now I'm going to use that paint. And this is, a, I did put a glazing liquid. So a glaze is kind of see-through. So that is what I'm getting here, which is fine. I have no problem with that. If you want more of a um, paint paint, less um, glazy, you would use a fluid medium. So actually I made my own glaze, not my own paint really. Right. Well, they're all paint. Yeah. Welcome, Brandon. Yeah, if you use an acrylic that's got a little bit more, it's more viscous, the pigments will appear denser and a little bit more opaque. Not really opaque, but you'll get more coverage. Mm -hmm. And it's funny, I've got a little bit of pigment hanging out here, so I am getting a little bit of brown. Because the yellow and purple make brown. So I'm going to wash that out just a little bit and come back and paint it again. And that's because I had some little bit of um, spillover. Because remember when I was tapping it on? Some of it just, you know, ended up on my page. Gave me a little bit of brown, but that's okay. Because you guys know, if you watch me all the time, you know I don't stress on this thing. I make, I figure out how to make lemonade out of it. Okay, I have a couple more spots I want to do, and then I want to show you one more technique that you can use with the same primary elements. I'll get careful because I'm getting near that yellow again. And we'll make brown. It's okay. <laughs> it's just reflecting, you know, it's just a reflection. That's right. There are no mistakes in art, says Patricia. That's right. I just didn't know I needed it brown. <laughs> Well, it makes it kind of interesting color. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Kevin. Welcome, Pedrito. Hey, Kevin was with us on that uh, beta Sunday when we Ted did the test. Oh, hi, Kevin. Kevin Welcome back again. He was fun to talk to. Yes, he was. Very informative on, on this particular beta. He's very knowledgeable. Mm-hmm. So I'm just getting a nice coat down and then I'm going to dry it and then I'm going to show you one more technique that you can do over this. And you can see the color is really starting to blend already in there. Even though they're not completely dry, you can really see them starting to do their thing, making prettiness. Okay. So can I ask a question? This is going to sound crazy. Could I take a bamboo skewer and reveal those beautiful black lines you put down and kind of separate that paint while it's still moist? Probably, but it should it should actually become clear eventually. Okay. You know what I mean? Because Yeah, I just want to reach through the screen and make those black lines appear again. <laughs> it's like, ah, you know, it's beautiful. You're right. But when it comes completely clear, the black will show through mm -hmm. more than it is now, of course. Yeah. Yeah, because it is, it is like you said, kind of not showing right now, but it will come back out as it gets clearer. But that is an option because it creates more dimensionality and waves in the air. Mm -hmm. Actually, maybe think of something. Hold on. Grabbing a, grabbing a paper flower. Wasn't planning on this, but. Something just came up in my brain, so I'm going to grab a paper flower. And 
that one will work. And since I still have some paint over here, hold this down for a second. I'm going to paint this purple, fl this flower purple. Because we can never have leftover paint, right? Got to use it up. Oh, yeah. That would be a waste. So that's the wisteria mixed with that glaze. Yep. And this is just like a set of paper flower. It's actually, <clears throat> it's actually from P Prima, but you know they have these at um, Michaels too. And I am going to do both sides because I am going to like put it in there and allow, allow it to be somewhat three dimensional. So I am going to paint both sides. Let me dry that. Thank you for muting that, sweetheart. Careful you don't get your paint too hot. It will start bubbling. I'm going to come in with just a second layer just to get some more dimension on here. Now since my, uh, my beads are still wet, I should be able to stick this right into this while it's still wet and it should adhere for me and I don't even need um, glue. Good. That's the word I'm trying to come up with. I'm just going to stick it down in the center so that it, it kind of lifts it on its own. And I'd probably put a bead or something in there later. Okay, I want to dry a little more around here so I want to show you one more way. But I need dry. Okay. Versamark or any type of um, uh, pigment ink that would work like a Versamark will also work. So you can take a stamp. I'm going to use this really swirly stamp here. Ink it up. Still a little hot, so I know that the pigments will grab the heat too. So I need to make sure that's not hot so hold on here I'm pushing it I'm rushing it it doesn't want to be rushed hopefully and I'm going to stamp off my sheet half on half off and you can see Versamark as you most of you know who's used it it's a basically like a um I almost want to call it an adhesive but it's not, not really an adhesive. Okay, so I'm stamping kind of off my sheet there. And I'm going to grab one of these colors. Green, there it is. See, I pulled it off to the side. And I'm going to really lightly, 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 lightly brush it over. And the Versamark will grab the uh, pigment. So this is another way that you can use these pigments. Can you see it coming out? Oh, nope, you're 
kind of in, hold on, give me a second here and I'll give We're you We're also in the shiny part of your paper. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. I see that that's way too shiny and that's what's going on. So hold on here and I'll give you a better view of this. Just because I want to get it on here while it's still wet. <laughs> but it turned out really pretty. Hello, Tanya. Okay. See that? Oh, yeah. Isn't that cool? Look at so that. that's another way you can use the pigments. So we've gone to what? We've done uh, one, two, three, four different ways to use the pigments. Now I'm going to continue this look across the top here just because I want it to be uniform. So again, I'm just using the Versamark. And I've showed you guys this before. You don't have to use your stamp completely. You can use it just a partial. So in this example, I'm actually only using half the stamp and I'm stamping off the paper. And I didn't get a real good stamp there, but that's okay. Yeah. This is the, I told you guys this before. Don't ever put beads on your book until you're done. Oh, I wonder what was holding that book up. Regret, regret, regret. Uh -huh. Aha. <laughs> Live and learn. Don't ever do this because you can't get your book completely flat. So, oh, well. Live and learn. Do as I say, not as I've done, right? So let me dry this a little more so we can get a clear spot so you'll see. You're starting to see the lines start coming out already. Yes. No, they do not. The pigments are just pure pigments, ground color and pig and and mica pigments. They need a binder. Okay. Good question, Sally. Yes, it was a good question. Um, always repeat the question so that the audience who is not seeing this at a later date can know what the question was. Okay. So the question was, do the pigments have a binder in them? And no, they do not. And I'm just grabbing my Titan buff. And I am painting in her body here that I didn't get earlier. Oh, oh, way too much paint. Oh, well. Never waste the paint. Yeah, I just wasted some because I dumped it out way too much. Oh, well. I guess I'm doing another face when I get off the air. Or just use it as background for later on. Okay. And I want to get her lips. I'm actually just going to use regular acrylic paint for that. Just because I'm not going to make up my own when I need so little. Just need the tiniest little bit of paint to do her lips. We have a couple of people wanting to come in. I'm going to let them know we'll be taking people to come in and ask questions in what we've got about 18 minutes, 15, 18 Actually, minutes. I'm almost done. So um, as soon as I'm done, we can stop the recording and they can come in and ask questions. And visit. Visit. So give, give us just a few more seconds and we'll let you in because I'm almost done. I'm just basically kind of getting her face, the lips done there. <clears throat> And I need some white to do her eye. Her eye kind of looks like it can. And I think I want some. I happen to have some dew drops on my desk from Robin's Nest. Speaking of Robin's Nest, um, design team call for Robin's Nest if you're interested in being a designer. Also, um, Bo Dabble. Bo Dabrell's having a design team call. And I do need glue for this. Let me see if I have glue on my desk. Glue, 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 glue. Glue, I have glue. So if you are looking for a design team call, um, check out both of them from the Robin's Nest page. And Bo Dabble. Bo Dabra. 
So I'm just putting a dew drop in the middle of that flower just because it needed something in there. And where it is, but my lid, there it is. Okay, I think I'm actually going to end it there. So I'm going to end the recording and then we can bring people in that have questions or comments or anything. Also, thank you for the love. Let me switch my camera up. So um, before I do that, let me get you in a little closer here. Again, that's not completely dry. As that dries, that will actually get even prettier. Um, yeah, because that white will become clear. And the yep. colors will really reveal themselves. You're right. They'll really, really pop. So that, and because I use the beads, it'll have like a sparkle to it. So it's going to be really cool. I'm excited to see that tomorrow. <laughs> That's done. So I showed you four different ways to use the um, primary elements. Okay, there I am. So I hope you um, think about using them. Um, you can go to the Facebook page, which is Color Art on Facebook, and if you aren't already signed up for the newsletter sign up for the newsletter because you still get a coupon with the newsletter yep first time subscribers get 10 percent did coupon given to them when they sign up so you get your that, and then you'll get um a monthly newsletter or actually it's more than monthly it's weekly right yeah every seven to ten days i keep you guys up up top on what's going on so. Yeah, and you'll get. She sends you projects and videos and everything, so you'll learn more and more, and more different ways to use this stuff. So, okay, I'm going to actually end the recording. Thank you guys all for showing up. Join me again next Tuesday. Stay around because we actually are going to continue to talk, but I'm going to stop the recording for right now. Um, thank you again. Join my group called All Things Terry Sproul. <laughs>